Hi YouTube, Gareth here again and I'm with the iPhone 7. Now this is an interesting phone because it feels more like a 6S than an iPhone 7. In fact, if anything, if this was the 6S, it would have been an amazing phone because we've got waterproofing, we've got dual speakers, we've got a slightly better battery, an improved screen and an improved camera. If this had come out last year, it would have been one of the best phones of the year. But given we've had a years further, this is the iPhone 7 and we thought it'd be something really amazing and something really cool. Let's take a look and see if the upgrades really are worth spending the extra money over the 6S. So here it is, the iPhone 7. As you can see, we've got the new jet black version, which is nice because it feels all shiny, it feels new. It also absolutely loves fingerprints, as you can see here. It absolutely adores getting all the smudges all over it. And it scratches really easily. This is something that Apple's actually mentioned already. So as soon as you get this phone, if you go for the jet black version especially, you're gonna to wanna to get a case, which I always feel is quite sad because you wanna show off your new iPhone if you've got a new device. As you can see, it's not actually that much slimmer than the iPhone 6S. In fact, it's not slimmer at all. It's exactly the same width, which, You'd hope Apple would make it a little bit better. You'd think Apple would slim things down a little bit, but when you consider it's got waterproofing in, it's got dual speakers here and here, there's a lot more going on underneath the hood. Around, around about here, we've got the Taptic engine as well, which gives you a different kind of haptic feedback when you're using the phone. So understand exactly why Apple's not made it any slimmer, but you kind of hope, given the headphone jacks disappeared from the bottom here as well, that it would be a little bit thinner. The loss of the headphone jack itself, it's a weird one because you can see what Apple's saying. It's an ancient port. We don't really need it anymore. Things can be done by the lightning port itself or Bluetooth, but it is really inconvenient. And you feel that while there has to be a step taken to start with, it's going to be at least two years until this stops being a real annoyance. And yet Apple's put the lightning connector in the box as an adapter. But if you lose that, if you misplace it, or if you just leave it somewhere else, it's really frustrating to not be able to use your phone with a standard pair of headphones you might have kicking around. When it comes to the screen, Apple's gone for a 4.7 inch 720p version, which is the same as we saw on the 6 two years ago. And you feel maybe, you know what, Apple could do a little bit better. If you look at the Samsung Galaxy S7, for instance, with a QHD screen, that's much sharper and side by side, you will notice the difference. But if you're just viewing it in isolation and just seeing the iPhone for what it is, you know, a decent viewing experience, you won't find you're really missing out on too much. Let's talk about the home button. Now, this is something that's a bit weird because the iconic clickable home button is gone. If any of our older viewers remember the BlackBerry Storm 2, for instance, it's a very similar experience to that where the whole screen clicked in, but nothing's moving here. It's just a taptic engine underneath here that's firing and making it feel like you're touching the home button. And while initially I really struggled with this, after a while I came to really love it and it feels like a really cool feature and it protects the iPhone from damage, which is also really useful to have. So in terms of the specs, Apple's done what it predictably does and upgraded the processor inside. So we've got an A10 Fusion chip inside this time, which means it's quad core. Instead of dual core, that's four cores running. Two of them do the normal stuff, handle the heavy lifting, and two of them handle the more basic tasks and essentially there to help battery life and improve efficiency. But as ever, the iPhone is as snappy as you could want it to be. So if you're using something like Photoshop Express here, the retouching of photos is very quick, very slick, and Apple's put more than enough power into this phone to make it easily adequate for day-to-day -day tasks. So even heavy lifting stuff works really well on the iPhone 7. Next up, we've got the dual speakers. Now again, as I said, these are top and bottom of the phone. It's a weird configuration. It's very similar to what Sony does with its phones because this speaker fires this way, and this speaker fires that way. There's also the curious situation where there's two speakers, but one of them is just there for aesthetics or completely redundant. Where the headphone jack was, that's just a few dots now for some reason. So when things fire forward, if you turn this right up, you definitely get a sense that some of the sound is going that way and some is going this way. Having dual speakers feels like a real step forward, but again, something that Apple's rivals have been doing for a long time iOS 10 feels like it really fits on the iPhone 7 because all the things that you need are right there within one swipe. The screen is the right size to be able to manipulate with one thumb. So Apple's got a good mix here. Some people don't like iOS 10, they feel there's too much going on and that might be a fair comparison, but if you're used to Android especially, you'll find a lot to like here. As I've mentioned previously, there's a taptic engine inside here, which is different from your usual haptic buzzing feedback when you get a message. Apparently, according to the pictures, it's around here somewhere, but it means that there's more of a, a fine tuning to the, to the haptics, to the vibrations themselves feel like they're more of a knock, more personal, more relevant, rather than just the whole phone buzzing. If you're playing a Formula One game, for instance, if it hits the side, you'll feel like it actually buzzes into the side rather than just the whole phone vibrating. It's one that's a really good move forward. And if that's the reason we've lost the headphone jack, it might not be the end of the world. Annoyingly, those games haven't actually come out yet. The ones that we tried at the demo event back in San Francisco, but in the future, game developers will be able to add that in via an API. So they've got access to the Taptic Engine, they'll be able to just add these separate effects in and really start to change them and corral them as they want to do. 
Right, let's talk about battery life on the iPhone 7. And this is a difficult one again. iPhones have never been good on battery. And while they have got better since the 6, I'm still finding that most days I'm getting to the end of the day and I'm starting to get into the red zone. I'm having to put on low power mode. So if you're doing something like using it as a tethering hotspot, for instance, or if you're just doing something a little bit more higher power, firing the screen, watching a movie with stuff running in the background, you will find the battery drains very quickly. And compared to its peers on the market right now, the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, uh, phones from Sony, from HTC, Apple is still lagging behind. Apple hasn't really upgraded the camera too much here. It's much better in low light. It's got an f1.8 aperture lens, which means in low lights particularly, it's very good. There's a little bit more noise, but generally it's a very good picture. And given how dark this scene was, we really appreciated that what Apple's done there. But as an overall camera effect, it doesn't feel like a lot's been going on really. It feels like Apple's just done the bare minimum to make it so that its camera now is as good as it needs to be to warrant an upgrade. There's no fancy new features. We haven't got live photos, for instance, that came a few years ago. We haven't got an improved HDR mode. We've basically got brighter and clearer pictures. And while that's good, it doesn't really feel like it's that much better than the iPhone 6s. So that's the iPhone 7 and it feels like a weird move from Apple because while the iPhone 6s was incremental and we expected that, we thought the 7 was going to be a big upgrade, but it's not. That's not to say that the waterproofing isn't great and the dual speakers don't add something to it, but the losing the headphone jack is inconvenient and while the screen and the camera are better, they're incrementally so. So if you're thinking of getting the iPhone 6s, well, you're probably getting quite a good phone and it's a lot cheaper than the iPhone 7. But if you want the latest phone from Apple, well, the iPhone 7 is good. It's just not great. As ever, please let us know in the comments below what tests you'd like us to see run with the new phone. Thank you very much for liking. Thank you very much for subscribing. And as ever, if you want more phone chat, Tech Radar is the place to be.